Thank you to the patrons for supporting my channel. Welcome back. Today, as voted on by my patrons, we're covering Archive 1983 again. A lot has happened since I last looked at it, so I'm excited to go back in. If you would like to vote on my next video topic, consider joining my Patreon. To recap on the last video, we basically figured out that the smiling man, the purple guy basically, killed the kids in order to reanimate his son's body, combine them together to bring his son back to life, his son being the bite victim. But it doesn't really work out. Now moving on to the new things. I want to tell it from my perspective. One night, very late, probably 1 or 2 in the morning, I was lying in bed on my phone and I got a stream notification from the Archive 1983 channel. I joined in and it was just a grainy view of the animatronics lying in the back room with that recognizable high contrast black and white look. But then a text to speech voice spoke and I realized what was going on. This was a live seance. This might be one of the most interesting things any FNAF VHS video series has done. The chat would ask questions and then a very creepy, classic Five Nights at Freddy's VHS text-to-speech voice would answer it live. And it all culminated, for me at least, when I got into the chat and the voice said, Second, you are not looking hard enough. I got literal chills. The dead of night and this ghostly voice says me, like addresses me by name basically. I just have to congratulate whoever the creator of this series is. That was amazing. So what did the live streams really mean in the grand scheme? Well, at least from my understanding, it's the children trying to tell the audience or anybody out there to find their bodies to set them free. This amalgamation in a basement somewhere, apparently where the purple guy has been trying to revive his son. Now for the newest tape, The Wrongly Punished. The tape starts by fading into a similar view of the live stream, of the animatronics on the floor with music playing. The animatronics move slightly and Bonnie looks terrifying. Foxy is standing and begins performing. Things start to fade out and then they fade back, and we can see Foxy standing over a headless child. Then the puppet in a very Christ-like pose. Here's the description decoded from the Zalgo text. God hold these souls that I have joined above your intended morals, for they are not in control and have been consumed by rage. Look into yourself to forgive these souls for the harm they have put unto the living. And as with last time, some very important details are revealed through the captions. The smiling man lied and made us monsters. It's not fair. It will never be fair. His father stitched us together to try and save him. David is in the yellow bear in the basement of his house, with my heart. David hurt his head. His dad needed us to help. Bring the rest of our bodies to David on his birthday. Mutilated by a monster. Fritz was hurt bad. The smiling man needed his head for the final piece to help David. But nothing worked. It's evil. It's disgusting. I will save you. So what do we make of all this? I'm gonna be honest, it's getting a little bit complicated even for me. So this is where I call upon you, the viewers, who may be more invested or have followed this and have done a lot of theories about this in the past, what do you think? But I do have some thoughts I want to share. Let's start with the religious imagery and references. I think this all goes down even to the title, The Wrongly Punished. Not only do the children not deserve their fate, they don't deserve punishment for all of the more violent tendencies they have now that they've been possessed. The puppet here is literally pleading to God, I guess, to not punish them because it's not their fault. The puppet did something against God's will by bringing them back to life, by saving them in some capacity. So the description of the video is the puppet talking. For the headless kid, I think that's obviously who's haunting Foxy. However, it would put a damper on my earlier theory that they're the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 bullies because that would mean the foxy head guy is Michael, but now he's headless? Obviously that doesn't work anymore. There seems to be a recurring theme of head injury. The headless child seems like his head is being used as a replacement for the bite victim, the smiling man child's head, as an attempt to fix him, I guess? And here's where we get to sort of an idea of where the resolution of the series might be. Springtrap needs to be burned, like I mentioned in another video, but something else needs to happen too. The soul's bodies need to be found and brought together around David, the bite victim slash smiling man's son, on his birthday to be set free, which is a direct parallel to this Five Nights at Freddy's 3 minigame. But for now, this is all I can really work out. If anybody has a more comprehensive or knowledgeable theory, let me know in the comments. Check out this channel in the description and let me know what I should cover next on my Twitter. You should also follow me there because that's when I announce when I'll be streaming at twitch.tv forward slash SaganHawks. See you all next time. Michael Hawks, got my same last name. Jay Batsby supporting me, that's insane. Spudnik, fly like a space probe. If you want to join these cool ass dudes, go to my Patreon in the description.